Hey, what's going on, my tribe? The Bleak Train is back again in Elden Ring with the Bleak build that most people are sleeping on and are not including in their top five of best Bleak builds. Now that I'm playing Elden Ring again, what better way to do it with the build that melts enemies in a matter of seconds with attacks so fast that you have to keep up clicking that attack button in your controller and boss fights are on easy mode with a combination of speed attacks and the weapon art itself. So stop sleeping on this build check out the video and try its power for yourself. I will break down how to set it up from stats, weapon, armor, items, and spells. All the good stuff you need to melt everything in your next NG Plus playthrough. So gear up and game on. Bleed is back. For those who follow my channel know that I really like Bleed Belt since the game was launched, but I have never tried the Renuvia Dagger because I'm not a fan of daggers combat and the tiny reach, but that was until now. It blew me away how much power that little dagger has. The great speed and the awesome weapon art that can add a little distance between you and the enemies. So let's not waste any time. Let's take a look at the attributes you need to create this build. I'm using a Bhagavan as my base class. Uh, so the numbers may differ from yours, uh, I recommend using a bandit if you plan to create this build from scratch, since you can use this weapon right away. Your main attributes are going to be arcane and dexterity, and you want to level up your vigor, also your mind and endurance to use your weapon art repeatedly if you want. So I got vigor at 65, mind at 30, endurance at 21, strength at 14, dexterity at 50, intelligence at 9, Faith at 15 and Arcane at 80. These stats are for my level 200 character, but if you have a lesser level character, you can follow up the attribute ratio that I have. So like I mentioned earlier, you're going to run with two Reduvia daggers that has blood loss buildup and scales B with Arcane and C with Dexterity at max level. Hence a big point in those attributes and it has very low requirements so you can start using them right away in early game. The weapon art is called Reduvia Bloodblade and it slashes the dagger in the air throwing blood blades that cause physical damage and blood loss and they are 100% spammable. I know some people hate it but it's really good. This weapon skill gives the build a medium distance attack in case you are not close enough or can get close to the enemy. You can obtain this dagger really early in the game when you defeat Bloody Finger Nerdus or whatever is pronounced. That's the invader you get by the entrance of Murk Water Cave in this location in Limgrave. You can only obtain one Reduvia per playthrough, so if you want to dual wield, you need a friend to drop it for you or play NG Plus and get another one. In my opinion, the damage that it puts out, it's great in close combat or at a distance with the weapon art. The only thing that I'm still not a fan is the super sharp reach of the dagger. But yeah, it's a dagger, come on. You have to be pretty close to the enemy. And let me tell you, some bosses and some big enemies like dragons move too fast or too far away or are constantly moving that to get real close is a pain in the ass, or at least for me. That's the only con that I have with this weapon. But if you're okay with it and you get past that phase, then you're good to go and you can start melting enemies. I also use a small dagger with the Golden Vow weapon art to buff before tough enemies, although the Reduvia generates great damage without any buffs. And for the seal, you can use whatever you have, because the spells I use like Flame Grant Me Strength and Flame Cleanse Me are fixed value so and don't scale with the seal, so you can use whatever you want. For the rest of the items, I'm not going to mention where to get them. I will leave that task to you if you want to create this build or any bleed build, in fact. For the armor, you want your ugly bleed metal helmet, aka the white mask, and the rest can be whatever you want. I went with the knight's cavalry armor, the black knife gauntlets, and the ronin greaves. To have this like dark metal knight assassin kind of kind of vibe going on. Now the first talisman I use is the Lords of Blood Exaltation that raises attack power by 20% for 20 seconds when the bloodlust occurs in the vicinity. It stacks with the beautiful White Mask. Next is the Rotten Wind Sword Insignia that increases attack power depending on the number of attacks you land. The tiers of increase are 6%, 8%, and 13%. Next is Millicent Prosthesis that works in a similar fashion, increasing attack power, but the tiers are 4%, 6%, and 11%. 
and increases dexterity by 5. It stacks with the Rotten Wing and Sword Insignia. And last, it's the Shard of Alexander that will increase the attack power of skills by 15%, in particular the Renuvia Bloodblade Weapon Art that we use. For the Physique Flask, I'm using the Dexterity Knot Crystal Tier that will increase dexterity by 10 and last 3 minutes. The second tier is the Throne Crack Tier that will increase damage by 9%, 13% or 20% depending on the consecutive attacks you land. It lasts 3 minutes and will stack with the Rotten Wing Sword Insignia and the Millicent Prosthesis Talisman. For this spell I only have two spells that one will buff your attack before a tough enemy or a boss fight and that's Flame Grand Me Strength that will increase physical damage by 20% and stamina recovery speed and it lasts 30 seconds. The second spell is the Flame Cleanse Me that will remove any buildup and cure poison and scarlet rot. Before any boss, the buff sequence that I use is I use the Physique Flash first, then the Dagger with the Golden Bow, and finally Flame got me strength. So there you have it guys, my first Elden Ring build in forever ago. But even with the dual wielding and bleed nerf, this build feels powerful and not too many people are mentioning it on their top 5 bleed builds. To me, it definitely belongs on the best bleed build list. If you get past the constant positioning to get close to the enemy, you can melt anything with a combination of close combos and weapon art attacks at a medium distance. So my advice to you is that you don't sleep on this build and on the weapon and try it for yourself in your next NG Plus playthrough. Hope you enjoyed this video like I did making it. Uh, if you run a similar build or different items, uh, please post it down below in the comments. I'm very interested in reading them and seeing what you use and what's used now since I've been, you know, away from Elden Ring in a few months. If you want to help the channel, hit that like button so this video can get to more people. And if you don't want to miss future videos, just subscribe to the channel and be part of the tribe. Again, thank you so much for watching and for clicking on the video. I really appreciate every one of you. And as always, be safe and see you on the next one. Ciao!